what is the genetic basis of gastroesophageal cancer? In this video, we'll be looking at a specific gene problem in the gene called CDH1. And we'll look at scenarios of whether it's inherited or germline or acquired through one's lifetime or somatic. In previous videos, we looked at the what, where's, and who's of cancer. What is cancer? What is gastroesophageal cancer? Where does it occur in terms of the three subtypes, esophagus, squamous cell, esophagogastric junction, adenocarcinoma, and gastric cancer, non-cardia, and also where globally each of these um, is at highest incidence. We also looked at who's at risk in terms of various uh, factors that are associated with the cancer are known to be causative of this cancer, including inherited problems in, in certain genes. In another video, we looked at the why and how we get cancer and went back to Cancer Biology 101, looking at DNA as the blueprint of life and that really cancer is a problem in the DNA sequence that then is manifest through transcription of RNA and translation of the protein where the protein sequence of amino acids is critical and that changes in just one can lead to altered function of the protein. We also talked about the importance of cell division and that we need this normally and it's tightly regulated, but that in cancer, this cell division is inappropriately on and, and not be able to inactivate. We looked at how many base pairs we have in our genome and that we are at risk every time a cell divides of making copy mistakes and that these copy mistakes can be random, although we have proofreading genes that can come and change these random mistakes that all, uh, uh, occasionally one or more can get through this proofreading mechanism and that whether you inherit a problem in a, in a gene or you're exposed to various factors that increase the changes in the gene, that then can accelerate the carcinogenesis on top of the uh, just general random mistakes that occur. So in this video, we'll be looking at inherited problems and specifically with respect to CDH1. You can see here that there's a number of different syndromes um, that are linked to various cancers, including stomach cancer, mostly gastric noncardia, as you see here on the slide, and that overall together, these make up less than 5% of all uh, gastroesophageal cancers. But regardless, hereditary diffuse type gastric cancer is one of the more common ones, and we'll focus on that one here. This is a problem in a gene called CDH1, which encodes for a protein called e -cadherin. So what is CDH1 and its protein e -cadherin? Well, when we in previous videos looked at under the microscope that we could see the epithelial layer, which is where the cancers originate, are composed of cells that are held together tightly. In, in this schema here, we have one cell and then another cell above it. And these cells are attached to each other. And one of the uh, major proteins that does this is E. cadherin. You can see E. cadherin comes through the cell uh, wall membrane, and some of it sticks out into the extracellular space and binds to other proteins on other cells and keeps them um, keeps these cells together. This gene resides on chromosome 16. And in previous videos, we looked at that we have 23 chromosomes times two, because we have one copy of each chromosome from mom and each chromosome from dad, and the 23rd chromosome being our sex chromosome that determines our gender. So CDH1 resides on chromosome 16, and if for whatever reason we have loss of one of the copies um, at, at birth because you've inherited one copy from uh, one of your parents, then you're at risk through one's lifetime of, of getting a loss in another copy in just one cell that then pr can propagate um, a cancer because you've lost both copies. So when you lose the other copy, you lose expression of the, these genes and loss of the e cadherin protein. What happens when, this, when you lose this protein? Well, first we look at the germline when you have an inherited problem in the gene, all cells will have that same problem in the one copy, or when we say one allele of that gene that you got from one of your parents. The other copy would be normal in every cell. However, through one's lifetime, if you get a second hit to just one of those cells, 
then that cell can propagate on to become a cancer because it would have lost the first one at birth and then through one's lifetime lost the second one. In contrast, if it's a somatic problem, you didn't inherit any problems in the gene at birth, but that you lost one copy in one cell through what your lifetime, and then that same cell lost a second copy. So this is important when we are differentiating between an inherited or germline problem or something that's acquired or somatic through one's lifetime. Now, this is a tumor suppressor gene and protein because this protein functions to keep cells together. So in this schema, uh, again, you see the two cells and there's a lot of different proteins that help to keep the cells together, but a common one is, and an important one is E. cadherin. And so if you lose this uh, protein, then you will have loss of these cells being held together and the ability of them to move around. And specifically in diffuse type gastric cancer, which is notoriously poorly cohesive, meaning each of the cells has detached from other cells and can disperse um, throughout the cell wall of, of the, the wall of the stomach. A specific subtype of cells in the diffuse type gastric cancer that's poorly uh, cohesive is called a signet ring cell that you can see here that the pathologist named because they look like a signet ring. So this is a subtype of diffuse type poorly cohesive a gastric cancer. In a CAT scan, which is a common uh, modality with which to stage and to diagnose cancer, including stomach cancer, what you can see here just briefly is a cross section through one's abdomen. And so this is your top as you're lying on your back. This is your top, your like your belly. This is your back. This is your left side and your right side. And your feet would be coming out of the screen towards where you're sitting and your head would be into the screen. And what you see here at this particular cross section is various organs in your upper abdominal cavity, including your liver here. This is a cross section through your gallbladder, your two kidneys, your spinal column with your spinal cord inside of it, your small bowel, which is white because it's, in, it's enhanced by the oral contrast that the person drank. And this right here is the stomach with oral contrast in it, as well as an air bubble. Air uh, comes up as black on a CAT scan. You can see here, this is a very thin wall of the stomach. In contrast, in a patient who has diffuse type a gastric cancer, what you see here again is the liver. In this case, you have a little bit of the spleen showing, but you have this very thick wall of the stomach compared to this very thin wall shown here. And this is why the surgeons named this linitis plastica because this is very stiff and thick. And in linitis plastica in Latin means leather bottles. So it's very stiff as opposed to this pliable, uh, loose, uh, normal stomach. Anatomically, this, this is a normal stomach, again, with a very normal uh, thickness. In contrast, this is a stomach that has been removed that is very thick throughout um, the whole stomach and an example of linitis plastica from diffuse type gastric cancer. So looking back at the central dogma of biology, where DNA is transcribed to RNA and translated to protein, and we have alterations in the DNA that have consequences in the proteins and their function, in some cases, the molecular alterations can be tested at either the DNA level or the protein level, and CDH1 or E-cadherin is an example of that. We can get the DNA from the cancer and sequence it and, and assess for the presence of any of these various problems that could lead to a problem in CDH1. And or we can get the sample and do testing called immunostochemistry and look for the protein expression. And so this would lead to E. cadherin lost expression in the example of diffuse type gastric cancer as a cause uh, from CDH1 alteration. In terms of determining whether it's inherited versus an acquired problem, we would first look at the cancer cell DNA and test for the presence of one of these abnormalities. And if present, then we would go and look at the normal cell. If the cancer cell has an abnormal problem in CDH1, then we would get normal cell DNA, either from a normal white blood cell or a cheek cell, for example, 
and sequence that. And if it was normal, then we would deduce that this is an acquired problem only in the cancer cell and not in your normal cells. In contrast, if it is abnormal in your cancer cell DNA, and then we went and looked in your normal cell DNA, and it was also abnormal, then we would deduce that this is an inherited problem that is occurring in the original problem in one of the copies of the gene is in all of your cells. And then in the cancer cell, the second copy was also knocked out. So in this video, we talked about the genetic basis of gastroesophageal cancer with specific focus on CDH1 gene and its protein product, e cadherin and also distinguishing between an inherited version of this versus something that's acquired. I should say that the majority of cases uh, are, are acquired through one's lifetime, but that there are a subset that are inherited, and we would check for that if appropriate. And that overall CDH1 mutation occurs in about um, 5 to 10 percent of all gastric cancers and is a notorious culprit for diffuse type gastric cancer for the reasons we discussed. Thank you for your attention to this video.